all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. All right, let's examine problem 12.3a, a special order problem. So when I think of a special order problem, I think of a special customer who wants in, they want a special deal, they either want to buy a product that we don't sell and they want us to sort of alter a product we're selling, or they're buying so much, much volume, they want a really good deal. And they're saying, look, your normal customer pays one, buys one unit at a time. I want to buy a hundred units. What can you do for me? What kind of deal can you give such a big special order, such a big purchaser? And uh, that's what we're looking at here with duty gear. Uh, so duty gear manufactures and sells high quality gear for firefighters. Operating at capacity, the company can produce and sell up to 10,000 uniforms per year. Costs associated with this level of production and sales are as follows. Uh, and there they are. It says the firefighter gear normally sells for $5,000 a unit. Despite the high price, the company regularly expects to sell 8,000 units in the upcoming year. I would think just expects to sell, not regularly, uh, expects to sell 8,000 units in the upcoming year. Fixed overhead is constant at $10 million between six and 10,000 units. So we're expecting this fixed overhead to be unchanging. And it, generally if you say, oh, something's constant, um, well, that's a general kind of cue to us thinking of relevant costs, which is what this chapter is all about to say, okay, if it's not gonna change, no matter how much I make, uh, this is probably not relevant to my decision. That's just uh, my gut feeling here. Um, okay, let's read on. A filmmaker wishes to purchase 250 authentic firefighting uniforms from the company. And they're quite expensive, eh? Like the cost to us is $3,000 to make and it's, you know, $5,000 is the sales price, I guess, because firefighting gear has got to be really high quality. Uh, so a filmmaker wants to purchase 250 of them. That's a lot. Uh, you know, it's almost 10% of our uh, expected sales. No, I guess it's like 5% of our expected sales or somewhere around there. Uh, the company's regular price is $5,000, but the filmmaker would like a volume discount and asks the company to produce, reduce its price to three grand. Well, you know, it costs us three grand to make for this large purchase. Accepting this deal would not affect the company's normal business. To fill the order, the company would have to purchase a machine to provide a special rubber coating on each unit of fire gear. Uh, the machine would cost a hundred thousand dollars so not only are we going to take a big discount we also have to buy a new machine to coat this fire gear and the machine wouldn't be useful outside of the order no use outside of the order the additional rubber coating would add a cost of fifty dollars a unit so not only does this guy want a great deal he also wants us to do extra work what a pain in the neck well let's figure out uh, how much this order would be worth to us in terms of profit, if any at all. So uh, the way I like to do this type of problem is I like to build an income statement. For a uh, special order scenario, I just build an income statement. So I say, okay, well, for the order. So I go, okay, what's the sales revenue for the order? And of course our sales revenue per unit, if we accept, is gonna be three grand. It's what the guy offered us. and he's offering 250 units so this is what makes it interesting not that number three grand isn't great for us because we would normally want to sell for five grand but this number would get your attention right if you were running this company this would kind of get you out of bed seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar order is probably not a small order for the company so they're going to seriously consider it even though it's a deep discount if it were, i walked in and said i want one fire uniform and i want you to sell it to me for three grand i want you to put on all this extra coating and stuff they would laugh me out the door but the guy wants 250 units well we'll we'll talk to him <laughs> Uh, he is in line for a special order. Now let's look at these costs, material, labor, and uh, overhead. So we got direct materials, and our direct materials normally are 800 bucks a unit, but we actually add to that because they're rubber coating. I would consider that to be a direct material. I would consider it to be 850 per unit. So 
850 a unit and we are doing 250 units what did i just do 800 for 850 times 250 is 212,500 in materials uh direct labor hmm Direct labor is $500 per unit. I guess the rubber coating doesn't add any additional labor cost, or if it is, it's built into this $50, which we've already dealt with. So uh, I don't see anything that affects that direct labor cost, so I'm just going to assume it is. 500 and 500 times 250 is $125,000. I should note that that's revenue. These are costs, right? And I'm kind of separating the two now. Uh, variable overhead is 700 bucks. Doesn't seem that this is going to affect our variable overhead. Uh, $700 per unit. And again, 250 units. So 700 times 250 is $175,000. Fixed overhead, a thousand bucks, not relevant, right? We're already making 8,000 units. If we make 250 more, our fixed overhead is still $10 million for our company. It doesn't matter whether I'm making 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 8,250 units is which I, what I'll be making after this. This $10 million figure is here to stay and we're stuck with it. So it doesn't change. So it's not relevant to this decision. Again, materials are relevant because I'm purchasing more materials, labor and over variable overhead are relevant. Fixed overhead is absolutely not. Um, okay, let's read on. Uh, what else might be then? And the only other cost I can think of that would be relevant is this hundred grand uh, piece of equipment, right? I don't see anything else there that seems like it's going to be involved. So I'll call it new equipment. Now it's not a hundred thousand dollars per unit. We'd laugh them out of the building if it was. It's a hundred thousand dollars for the two hundred and fifty units, and we can figure out a cost per unit here. Four hundred dollars a unit for the coating equipment. So it's really four hundred and fifty dollars to coat because four hundred dollars for the equipment and fifty dollars for the actual rubber coating. Okay. I think that's all of our costs. So let's total up our costs. Uh, 850 plus uh, 500 is 1350, 2050, 2450. And our total costs over here. Let me just re add that. 850 plus 500 plus 700 plus 400. Yeah, 2450 times 250 is 61,250. 61,500. So our operating income from the deal is 550 a unit we're making, and uh, 750 minus 61,250 is 137,500. So if we accept this deal, we're $137,500 better off. The accountant's knee-jerk answer here is to say, yes, we should accept. If we're a dollar better off, we should accept. Um, and, and the key to this whole thing is that, uh, not this part, sorry, uh, is that if we accept the order, it does not affect our other sales, right? We're selling these authentic firefighting uniforms to a filmmaker. It's not like it's going to affect our sales to fire halls down the road, right? If we were selling it to some fire gear distributor we wouldn't cut them this kind of a deal i don't think but to a filmmaker i think it's pretty reasonable to accept this low and it is a low ball offer um it makes us money it puts money in our pocket it's it's probably a good deal but the key is it can't affect our other sales all right folks uh that's it for this video stay tuned for our next one